You may know by now very well about the Log4j exploit that is crushing the internet right now. If you haven't, I've already posted a video on my channel that you should definitely watch after you watch this. Or save this video to watch later and then go watch that one then come back and watch this one. Just a couple ideas. One of the things that I noticed was a lot of people were leaving comments on that video, kind of asking for more information and there, we have learned a lot since that video was originally recorded. And just in general, there's a lot of updates to provide so that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now. One of the first things that I want to do because I noticed that a lot of people that may not exactly have the kind of background in cybersecurity to kind of parse some of the terminology that I was using, I want to make sure that I clarify some definitions up front before we dive into the meat of this video. Remote code execution, commonly in an acronym form is RCE. That refers to whenever an attacker runs a command and it is passed to a server. So they can do, I mean, there's a lot of other more complicated stuff that happens to kind of gain this and that they can do after. But from there, theoretically, they can do whatever they want. Conceptually, that's really what it is. Whenever I say adversaries, I'm referring to the bad guys, quote unquote, or the hackers, or, you know, the people online that are trying to run this exploit in the wild for malicious intent. And then unauthenticated means that the attacker doesn't have to take over a user account or log into a user account in order to perform certain actions. They can literally just mosey on over to a site and then just start doing stuff as if they're a user or they have certain permission sets. Obviously that's not good. So those are some definitions up front that you wanna be aware of. Now, first and foremost, who should be concerned about Log4j? In short, quite a lot of people, but we're gonna break that down and into what exactly that means. Now, if you are running an Apache server, which is vague and is a lot of people and is run for a lot of reasons, you definitely should be concerned if you are not running version 2.15 or greater. That includes the patch for this vulnerability. So the fix is already out. Make sure that you're up to date. There's a caveat to this. That both of which we're going to talk about in a moment, but definitely make sure that you are at versions 2.15 or greater. If you've seen my previous video, then you know that this range of Apache versions is actually what is vulnerable to this exploit. So again, the patch is already available. Just, just get it. Now, if you are running a Minecraft server, and a lot of people in the comments definitely seem to be either playing Minecraft or running Minecraft. If you are playing Minecraft or running Minecraft, Make sure that you are using version 1.18.1 or greater. Mojang already released a, an update for this in a patch. So make sure that you are up to date and you should be fine. Again, a caveat to that, but hold on for that. Now, both Steam and iCloud were also shown to be vulnerable to this exploit. Unless you're running your own kind of home deployment of Steam or iCloud, like as a service, then, I mean, make sure that you're installing all your updates and patching and whatnot, but this really seems to impact mainly the back end of Steam and iCloud, meaning that Valve and Mojang respectively will have to, you know, do the work on their end to make sure that their systems are patched and the, you know, the hosting of those applications can continue in a secure fashion. Now, if you have seen any instances where an actual user can get exploited that is running either Steam or has iCloud, definitely comment that down below because I'm like very interested in that. Now, like I said, there's there are some caveats here that I wanted to find. If you're all the way up to date, then you might be safe from being exploited directly. But there's a couple things. One, if you have in installed the update and it was after the CVE was assigned and the vulnerability had been made public, which is very likely, then you wanna make sure that you didn't get breached before you were able to install the update. So to do that, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have sufficient monitoring in place. And there's several videos on my channel that you can check on kind of what you should be doing to do that. And then two, you wanna be looking for indicators of compromise. Now, there's gonna be more research published about how exactly to detect these kinds of uh, incidents, but if you're running a Minecraft server specifically, you, you're gonna to wanna to try to go back to cases where a user typed something into the chat bar and then a remote connection was made over the internet to an untrusted or unrecognized host. That's not to say that that's 100% malicious, but it's gonna be something that you're gonna to wanna to get some more context around to confirm that that is not this exploit being run. Now, another thing to be aware of, you may have data that is being owned by either one of these companies, and that might be something that's concerning you as well. 
After all, between Mojang, Apple, and Valve, and I'm sure several of the other companies that are running Apache on their back end that may or may not be vulnerable to this exploit, that's over 1 billion people at least that I could count just from Mojang, Apple, and Valve, assuming there's no overlap. Yeah, there's probably overlap, but let's not do math. Math stinks. Now, each one of these companies has very capable and I'm sure very robust security teams that are working around the clock to make sure that your data is protected. So don't be too concerned. They're probably doing a great job. At least I hope everything is fine, right? Now, if you're the one that's running the server, if you're the one that is the host provider or what have you, I mean, now the, the buck is with you. You have to make sure that you're the one that's working and making sure that your clients are protected. And that comes kind of with the caveat that I already mentioned where you're making sure that you have the right tooling and monitoring in place, which hopefully was done ahead of now, but hey, there's no time like now to get that done. But also you're hunting for the indicators of compromise to be able to make sure that that is done. Now, if you are not able to upgrade, there are, which for many reasons, and I already know in the previous comments, some people just aren't able to upgrade. It happens, it's a business thing. But that doesn't mean one, still don't try to make an effort to find a way to upgrade as soon as possible. But two, you can set this parameter to true and that'll be a good temporary solution. Again, I wanna emphasize temporary solution. Try to get that patch done. But again, if all else fails, just do that and that should offer some level of protection in the meantime. Now time is of the essence. If you follow Andrew Morris and or the staff at Grey Noise, they produce some excellent threat intelligence on the internet and kind of with what's going on out in the wild. They've actually been seeing attackers actively scanning for vulnerable hosts and then actively trying to exploit those vulnerable hosts. Now, kind of if you're not familiar with how this has gone in the past, attackers will actively go out and try to attack and, and exploit as many hosts as they possibly can. And then some things may happen. They may install crypto miners on those systems, which is hilarious, also bad, but I mean, w better than it could be, like ransomware, a lot of attackers tend to sell access on the dark web, and then ransomware actors will go up and then install ransomware and then they'll try to extort the service owner for money. To further illustrate the point, exactly how easy is it to exploit this vulnerability? I mean, the proof of concept is already published. There's a link down in the description if you wanna try this out in your own secure home lab. Watch my other video, I'm gonna explain that part. It's literally a one-liner, we already showed. It's literally a one-line command that the attacker needs to run and then they're able to basically tell the server to connect to a remote host that the attacker controls and then they're able to pass commands back to the server. It's that easy, it's 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 so easy. So time is of the essence, make sure that you're, you're, you're getting that done and you're protecting your people. And we've talked about a lot, one of those things was the hunt for indicators of compromise. This top video kind of goes into more on that if you're interested in more information in that regard. On the bottom video is my original video on Log4j. Check that out if you haven't already. Of course, make sure that you like this video if it was helpful and subscribe for more information. There's a 0% chance that me hitting 10,000 subscribers will actually solve Log4j, but it's worth a shot, so let's go for it. Have a good one.